Turning us now is Ojinika Ojiu, where stories trending around the world. Hello, Jinix. Good morning, Dr. Abati. How are you this morning? I'm good. I'm <laughs> you good. went on that stretch. Hope you had a great weekend. Yes. Rufai, how are you? Jinix, Jinix. Good. You had a good weekend, I hope good, so. Good, yeah. Well, all right. Well, let's begin what's trending in Lagos, where His Royal Majesty, the Oba of Benin, Oba Ewari II, was received by the Lagos State Governor, Babajide Sonwolu, on Sunday at the Lagos House in Marina. The traditional ruler, who is one of the most revered monarchs in Nigeria, congratulated the Lagos State Governor on his re-election and commended his giant strides while charging him not to rest on his oars to achieve greater heights in his second term in office. The Oba also noted that the victory of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu in the 2023 presidential poll showed that God ordained him to rule the country and called on all Nigerians to support his administration. <laughs> Your Excellency, we want to repeat again our congratulations to Mr. President. We, we are happy that it's all over now. It has gone to the, to the end of the road. Whatever controversies or, or objections or whatever cannot go beyond that. But God has ordained that President Tino will be, be the president. And uh, we thank God for your also success, uh, success, uh, full, uh, successful uh, you know, uh, election. About top, I he said, you know, I was uh, privileged to be in the presence of his predecessor, Omonobai Do Kwapolo Polo, of Radiawa the second, when yeah. I was much younger. Yeah, well, the, the first, Radiawa the first, uh, who uh, he took over the position. But like you said earlier, Dr. Abati, I did listen to you. It's quite a significant uh, visit because obviously it raises a lot of questions, and there's that significant link between the Benin people and the people of. Of Lagos and you know like you said it's sort of a, a homecoming for him but you know a lot of people have talked about the fact that uh, um, the Oba's visit saying that you know Tinubu was ordained by God <laughs> I don't know if he might be in the position to talk about that the Oba's uh, visit also elicited other commentaries one of which was that Lagos was built by the people of Benin a statement that has generated controversy in Nigeria both in the past and currently. You know, I don't want to mention something that will now drag me into the controversy of Benin and Lagos. <laughs> but I can but, if, but I can I cannot help but saying that at least it is it is in history books that we that Benin founded Lagos. <laughs> But when some people will hear it now, they go a while and say, ah, what is your boss saying there again? Saying, but it is true. Go and check out the records. Maybe not all over Lagos as we know it now, but certain area in Lagos, maybe the nucleus of Lagos was founded by my ancestors. The Oba of Lagos will say so. I'm sure you know that he will always emphasize that it comes from Benin. Everybody knows, but uh, the source of Lagos is Benin, whether or not he likes it or not. <laughs> well, a little bit of history there. More history. I mean, yeah. it is the truth. A lot of people know this, but I mean, it's good that he's coming out so, again to say it. If you recall, during the election time, that whole story oh, about Lagos is no man land. Oh, I think that, you know, his, okay. his statement there puts a lot to rest in, okay, in that regard. Talk. This was what I said yeah. during the election time yeah. that went viral. Let me quote what the Oba of Lagos said in an interview in 2017 that, that says from the Guardian that said, Lagos Oba traces origin to Benin. They said, but last week in Lagos, the Oba said, Lagos State is not part of Yoruba land. 
According to a statement from Igai Dugan of the Palace of the Lagos Oba, uh, Oba Keolu was quoted as saying, I was told by my late maternal grandmother, who was a descendant of Oba of Vunare Egwiasi, with facts from historical book, and let me share the knowledge with you. Modern day Lagos was founded by Prince Ado, son of Oba of Benin. Prince Ado was the first Oba of Lagos, and it was then named the town Eko until the Portuguese explorer Rui de Segura changed the maritime town to Lagos, which at that time from 1942 was a Portuguese expedition. So I think Dr. Abadi has even stated the history. These were the things I talked about in a piece that a lot of people kept on. You see, even those that are claiming to be Lagosians, a lot of them are not Lagosians because of political expediency. They now start to claim Lagos. The true Lagosians know each other. So on that score, the Oba was right. And that's why I always read history because somebody took paper, you know, wrote articles abusing me and saying all sorts just because I recounted the history that when the history books had been reiterated. And the Oba of Lagos reiterated that again. Yeah. The part that he said that is God, I know. Our political system gets our leaders. Let's not put God into this at all. I don't like a, when, we, when we put that narrative in. No, our political system throws up our leaders. So what are we going to say about the judgments? A lot of people have been complaining. Is it God that is in the Supreme Court? Is it God that is in the appeal court? Is it God that makes all those judgments? Is he also God that put the clerical error in kind of judgments? Let's just leave God out of our... Except Nigerians learn to understand that participation in the political pro pro process is what heralds leaders. And if you don't participate, if you continue to be indifferent, you get the kind of leaders you get. If you don't understand that, then the country doesn't move forward. Because even in the last election, OJ, I need to say this importantly as a wrap up, that a lot of Nigerians are saying Nigerians came out to vote. Nigerians didn't come out to vote in these last elections. Let's not deceive ourselves. Voter apathy was still very high. For a country with over 80 to 90 million voters, less than 30 to 40 million people decided who was president. Right. Well, and that's still very low. Until we have something like other countries, we have over 65, 70% voters. We can't build this country. So stop being indifferent. Come out and make your voices heard. Right. That's all well, I'm going to uh, say. Well, Rufa, you made a lot of points. And, you know, I, while I agree with you, the Oba, who, you know, is a monarch, is also a Nigerian citizen and has his own opinion. And, you know, if he says it's God that ordained Tinubu, that is his opinion, right? Yeah. But also, Dr. Abati, I love the fact that uh, the Lagos State Governor took him to that Yoruba Museum. Museum, and then, you know, they had that type of cultural interaction between the people of Benin and, you know, the people of Lagos. I think it's another feat for the Lagos state government. I mean, that uh, museum is not fully open, but, you know, when it's open, it will be a, a nice addition to the cultural yeah, landscape. Good, thing, good optics. Yes. Knowing that the uh, Oba himself, you know, is somebody who has a very strong interest in the preservation of culture and monuments and museums you know, and uh, uh, re retrieving stolen artifacts and giving our culture a pride of uh, place. Uh, on the point that he made about uh, Benin having founded uh, uh, Lagos, well, you know, when Mr. Feni was on the program, he said, look, at a time, the Benin Kingdom stretched all the way to the Republic of Benin, the great Benin Empire. It was an empire, just like the Oyo Empire yeah. in those days. And uh, earlier on, I tried to give a bit of history, as told by the present Oba of Lagos himself, yes. you know, about, the, uh, about Prince Ado, uh, who was uh, uh, the first king in uh, 1630, you know, and then how to start connection. And that's the point that the Oba of Benin was making. That, look, it's, this is like coming home uh, for him, more or less. Uh, but, you know, people are very emotional about history. One fellow I see has quickly written uh, a piece about me saying I should not give a history lecture on Lagos. Well, I wasn't giving a history lecture. People should not project their own illiteracy, you know, because I found the reaction very by the good. person, yeah. you know, very abusive. He said, oh, I, that I said uh, Prince Ado married uh, Irelukuti. Well, Irelukuti, he, he has correctly pointed out, is the uh, daughter of Prince Ado and truly the mother of uh, Ologun Kutere, who later also became king. But people should learn not to be emotional, okay? Uh, when you say Lagos belongs to all of us, Lagos is the most cosmopolitan center, nobody is taking Lagos away from the Lagosians. Yeah. You know, so I, I find the emotionalism of some 
characters who call themselves indigenous persons, you know, even when the Eleko himself does not react, you know, emotionally like that to bits of history, they should learn and try to speak like educated people. That's uh, one. The point that uh, the Oba Obini made about, you know, uh, Tinubu being ordained by God, the Oba Obini kings are also spiritual beings within their community. And, you know, the Beninese, they their monarch is highly revered. It's not just uh, uh, the king, it's also the spiritual head. And it's also like, you know, some people from certain parts of the country, when anything happens for religious reasons, they say, oh, it is the will of God. I think it's in that context, mm. you know, that the Oba Obene was speaking, not in a political sense. So if he says, well, only what God wants happens, I don't think that that is a, a wrong thing to say. But other people, who are not so religious, mm -hmm. they have different views. Absolutely. So let all flowers bloom. Mm -hmm. Let all views uh, flourish. Well said. Still in Lagos State, as the Ministry of Environment and Water Resources continued its demolition exercise of houses built in contravention of the Lagos Master Plan, many residents in Abule Ado area of the state were displaced over the weekend. Chimobi Ezingwa, one of the residents affected in the demolition exercise said his mansion worth 300 million naira was destroyed without prior notice, rendering him and his family homeless. This is my property. It has been demolished. And there was no notice before, before encroaching on my property, destroying it. Even if I didn't have uh, a FHA allocation, if they ask me to pay for the reclaiming of the land, I'm ready to pay. And they destroyed my property over what? Over 300 million. Yeah. I'm begging. I'm calling on the presidency to do something about this. Children are homeless now. They can't even go to school. About four people are dead because of this out of heart attack, out of tension. People are dead. We have lost lives because of this. Just look at it. My wife is in hospital because he cannot bear it. She can't bear it. She has been hospitalized. As I am now, I'm confused. Well, back in October, Dr. Bati Rufai, I interviewed the commissioner um, who is in charge of this demolition exercise, Tokumbo Wahab, and he did say many of these buildings were built in contravention, like I said earlier, and most of them did not take the permission or get the right permission to build those um, houses. But I mean, you can hear this man saying that he did not get any notice before his house worth 300 million naira was demolished. I thought it was important to highlight his story so the Lagos state uh, government can respond. Well, some users on social media have alleged an ethnic agenda coming from this story. Some say that the Lagos state government is only after Igbo landlords and began trending an old video of Pastor Tunde Bakari where he talked about conspiracy against Igbos. I was at a meeting. A few days back last week, and they said, The Ebos! We must find a way of checkmating them. I sat there in the midst of them, and the man said, You are not even seeing anything. I said, What is the offense? He said, They are bought everywhere in Lagos. They are buying and buying. And I said, When they came, they came with gun and shot your people, but your people collected money for the purchase. Baba looked at me and said, why are you like this? I said, I'm like that. Did your people sell to them? Who asked you to sell your land? That was the end of the meeting. Uh, if you are going to invite me into a meeting where we are going to move the nation forward, don't pitch one tribe or uh, ethnic clash against the other. It's not going to work for those of us who believe that the best of the north and the best of the south must come together to steer the shape of our nation. Do you understand me? Well, this video was taken three years ago, and, so, but it is quite relevant now. And a lot of people have, you know, juxtaposed it with the demolition because the people in that area are mostly Igbos. Okay. So, please, we call for unity. Yes. We call for peace. We call for progress. No ethnic baiting of some sort. 
absolutely not. I know the last election has brought about so much division orchestrated by many parties, but please, we want a strong, indivisible nation. It's a work in progress. I'm not saying a lot of people are not hurt or violated, but please, let's keep the peace. Most importantly, we'd like to call on any group. Do not violate any other ethnic group. Do not have any targeted plan. I mean, the pastor here did talk about any conspiracy and all of that. The government should come out and reassure the Igbos that nothing of such is happening. But let's go to the real matters on ground. Did those that their homes are demolished, did they get the proper approval? If they didn't get the proper approval, then did they have no you know, gravitas here to be able to say that they have been violated. Because you must get the proper approval. Who do you deal with as regards your home? If they had the proper approval and the proper certification and all of that, they have the right to be able to take government to court. But if you don't have it, let us allow government to do the job. It's very sad, yes. I feel the pain of those that have lost livelihoods and property. We pray for speedy healing of those in the hospital. But you must also get proper approval and get what is right. That's just it. Absolutely. But let us throw down all this narrative, this conspiracy, because I'm seeing a lot of things back and forth, even not all go well. And I tell people about rancor and chaos. You know the beginning, but you don't know the end. And that's why shame on the political class that divided people in Lagos and other parts of the country in the last election along tribal lines. Because most of this is now coming up because of the things that happened in the last election, and we need to heal. Absolutely. We'll take another story then. The presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, over the weekend, joined his alma mater, Christ the King College in Onicha, to celebrate its 90th Founders Day. The former Anambra State Governor shared pictures of the visit in a post on X stating that the college has stood as a beacon of discipline, knowledge, moral integrity, and an unwavering commitment to excellence. Last week, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, also paid a visit to his alma mater, Central Primary School in Adamawa State, where he received a resounding welcome. <laughs> this i mean the importance and the relevance of uh, the alma mater i mean yesterday i spoke with you know professors from the university of ibadan where they celebrated their anniversary um, over the weekend and you know they talked about the fact that you know these big individuals uh, you know continue to contribute to their schools and you know funding is quite important i think um, atiku also offered scholarship uh, you know to mark his 77th birthday during that visit but you know social media is uh, very notorious with you know stories like this a lot of people are calling on uh, you know the president as, as well to probably visit uh, uh, his uh, alma mater dr Bati. Uh, alumni associations yes. have become very important within the education funding space uh, with government not doing enough to fund the schools and many of the schools that were great schools in the past those schools established by the missionary taken over by government many of them have failed they've collapsed Many of the schools also built by uh, government are not well maintained. What is this major story coming out of Zamfara? Dilapidated structures, yes. you know, inadequate uh, teachers, poor funding of the system, states not paying enough attention. And now this new governor, uh, Governor Lawa, says he's paying attention. But to go back to CKC Unicha, as it is uh, popularly known, Christ the King College, the school was celebrating its 98th anniversary. And so Mr. Peter will be uh, visited to identify with the uh, students on the occasion of the 90th anniversary. This is a school that has produced three uh, cardinals of the uh, Catholic uh, Church, has produced uh, scholars, legal luminaries, countless number of SAS, very distinguished people. And the students of CKCU Nature, you know, th this was a school that produced students that had great confidence in themselves. When I uh, uh, go to Calabar, uh, you know, there were some people who came from CKCU Nature. They were working like they were working on, uh, uh, you know, they were very proud of, of the school that produced them. And then we used to tell them, okay, come now, let, let's write exam. And we'll see who, 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 who is who. But of course, they were good students. They were, Who's going to compete they, with you? Yeah, no, no, but they were good students. <laughs> I, I admit that. So, but that tradition is no longer there. So a person like Mr. Peter will be going back to his alma mater 
you know, would inspire those young people. Look at him wearing the same jacket to them. Mm -hmm. that, that inspires people. And I think more people should take interest in the alma mater, join the alumni association, and ask questions. Apart from alumni associations renovating schools, uh, giving money, and all of that, you know, that I think Government College Umahi also wants to do something. Abelkuta Grammar School, you have the old st students doing a lot. Okay, my own secondary school too, Lishabi Grammar School. Lisha are, what's it called? Lishabi. Lisha 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 no, Lisha you have school. a new name. <laughs> <laughs> Lishabi is a patron saint of the Egba people. Fantastic. So, you know, so you have all these alumni associations yes. giving back doing a lot more for their schools. But the more important part is to continue with the advocacy. The yeah. government must pay more attention to the education sector yeah. so that we can have more people like the Peter Obis, like the uh, Chinoache Bs. Yeah. You know, uh, Chinoache Bs went to government college, Umaha here, yeah. you know, and you know, Abelkuta Grammar School. of the East. You know, Ibadan Grammar School, all those schools. And Lisha Bay. Yes, and my school. <laughs> Congratulations to those schools. Well, all right. We shall take our final story in South Africa, where the country's president, Cyril Ramaphosa, has come under fire for inaugurating a water tap on Sunday in Josini local municipality in KwaZulu-Natal. The South African president was seen in a trending video surrounded by some officials and supporters. Well, South Africans on social media argued that the launch of a water tap is not the job of a president, but that of councillors. While others questioned why the president did not take a drink from the tap water, but only washed his hands, raising concerns on the portability of the water. <laughs> I'm sorry, I mean, this made me laugh a lot. I mean, we have seen a lot of this happening in Nigeria. Also, people inaugurating roads, electricity poles, which I think is completely <laughs> absurd. <laughs> Boreholes, <laughs> really. I mean, I mean, I mean this, these are things that are supposed to be normal, basic. Very normal, ability. basic. And for a country like South Africa that has, uh, you know, quite a good level of infrastructure, mm -hmm. this should not be a priority. But, you know, it goes further to speak volumes about our leadership system on the African continent. Yes. And that's why we should introspect strongly and ask from our leaders, what do we want? How far do we want to go as we speak on this continent? Because as at a time like this, you know, people should be thinking of better innovations. And uh, if you ask me, the Romans had aqueducts way back 1600s, in terms of the Roman Empire, even longer than that, the Roman Empire. What, what are you you're talking about Roman Empire? About about the pyramids and all yeah, of that. Yeah, I'm talking about Roman, even Roman, before the 1600s. I'm yeah. talking about Roman Empire. <laughs> they had aqueducts that could carry water to <laughs> cities. All right, Dr. Roman Martin, Empire, 800. So oh, okay, just to add a bit yes. of history to this. This uh, water tap that uh, the president of South Africa Commission it's in a place called Josini Village mm -hmm. in KwaZulu Natal. And you know, they have a dam mm -hmm. around the place, what they call the Josini Dam. But the people of that Josini Village, they have not had water for more than 10 years. Because the Josini Dam, under apartheid, is used to service the few rich people mm -hmm. and the uh, white settlements around the area. So there is a history about this. It's about you know, part of the inequities of apartheid. Uh, so maybe that's why the president was uh, motivated to go there and make sure that the black communities in uh, that Josini yeah. village, who are also within the vicinity of Josini Dam, yeah. can also drink water. Yeah. And it will not only be white people that will be drinking portable water, but maybe he should have tasted, but he, he should have drink drank the water. out of the he water. Should have, yes. You know, just to demonstrate. Yeah. 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 Well, just put the, pot, just put the, the tap there and keep yeah. it going. Yeah, yes, really. but, but generally, <laughs> yes. African leaders make a big ceremony Absolutely. out of little Absolutely. things. Absolutely. Is it not here that the commission electric poles? Electric poles, I've never heard of that before in my life. Well, I'd like to thank you both for your great analysis, as always, on What's Trending. Well, that's all I have for you on What's Trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.